speaks the truth. And y'all going to see what I'm talking about by the time he gets finished. So without any further ado, the next voice you're going to hear is the voice of the irritated genie of Southeast. <laughs> Our God commands growth and prosperity to African people, peace to all God's beings, and death to all enemies. How you doing, African family? Fine, right, sir. Oh, it's looking good out there today. Hey, all these beautiful yeah. black people. Man, I, I'm enjoying myself right now already. I just walked out here. It's good to see all these brothers and sisters here. feel real good about this. Uh, before we go any further, I want to just say right from the beginning, this is a very difficult topic uh, to conquer. We're going to go through some real tough terrain today, some tough territory. Before we go any further, what I want people to do, I want everybody to understand we're a family today. We're a black family. Not like it is out in the streets and the way, you know, we end up dealing with each other because of all of the turmoil out in the street. But here, when you come to a PKV function, you're dealing with your brothers and sisters. So if it gets a little rough and rocky, which it may, during the course of this lecture, during the course of this forum, then I want you to look to that brother or sister next to you. You know, or if you see somebody need it, you know, tap them on the shoulder, do what you have to, because it might go like that, but we're a black family. So right now, I want everybody to look at the brother or sister next to you, introduce yourself, say, how you doing, you know? We black family today, we black family, that's right. That's right. You know some of y'all wanted to do that anyway. Y'all were just waiting for that opportunity. That's right. All right. Don't it feel good to be a black family? Yeah. It feels good, doesn't it? Like I said, uh, we, we came for a very serious topic today. Um, it's something that's very, very oppressive to our people at this time. And in order for us to move forward and figure out what steps we need to take to fight and conquer this thing we call the effeminization of the black male, something that's really hurting the race, in order for us to make moves, we got to understand it first. And what happens in, uh, under the system of racism, white supremacy, brothers and sisters, a lot of times things just are happening all around us all the time. That's right. And consequently, we don't really understand what's going on. And because we don't understand, we don't know what the right moves to make up. So today what we want to do is we want to dig deep. I don't want you to think that we're trying to be vulgar, that we're trying to introduce you to something that's uh, filthy and decadent. But I say it like this. You're not going to believe me once you see the lecture, but I'm not even showing you the worst of the worst. But in order for us to really understand what we're talking about, the feminization of the black male, it's imperative that we look at the white race to understand where this type of behavior comes from. That's right. And unfortunately, it's going to be some very uncomfortable things we're going to go through. It's not an attempt to be vulgar, but it's the only way we're going to understand it is to understand the root of it. Right. So as we go through it, I want you to keep in mind, as bad as some of the things are you see here, everything you see is mild in comparison to what's really, really going on. But I think this will give us a good basis for where to start. And so what we're trying to figure out today, I want you to take a look here. See, these are some strong brothers. Don't they look strong? Yes, sir. These brothers were the Black Panthers. These were 60 original members. These brothers down here, we had to go all the way to the other side of the world, go home to Kenya, call the Mau Mau, the Kikuyu, who were fighting against the British right. for independence for black people. Don't they look strong? Yes, sir. So when we're talking about the feminization of the black male, we got to ask ourselves how we got from viewing ourselves like that, mm. uh -oh. to as men as seeing ourselves like this. Mm. Now I want you to look at it. And if you look on this side, a lot of people argue these brothers on the right side are just as physically strong. That's right. Some might say they're even more strong as these brothers on the left. But there's something inside of these brothers here on the left side, these right. panthers and the cuckoo you. Yeah. Something on the inside that you can't see with your naked eye that has them perceiving themselves as freedom fighters, as men who protect their women and their children. Right. Something inside where these men, something on the inside of them says, I don't want to be a threat. Yeah, oh, that's right. Say, I don't want to be a threat to white power. So we have to go after this now to understand how we came from this, how we go from here to here. Before we do, I tend not to tell stories a lot, but I want to tell this quick story because uh, it's just been it's been working on me since about it was '96 or '97. I took my first trip to Africa. I went to Senegal, and this is a picture of a place they call Gori Island. This is one of the last stops that black people made before we were dragged to the Western Hemisphere. And that little white rectangular door you see right there is something called the Door of No Return. This was.
was the last place, the last step many of us took on African soil before we were thrown in the holes of slave ships and brought to the Americas. And I was going through, just as so you can see, this says infants. That's where they kept the babies or the children uh, to be moved. They had little different rooms for different individuals. And in this particular thing here, you see, that's me right there on my knees. I'm, I'm bending down because in this particular holding cell, it was for the most rebellious. The brother or the sister who had that fight them and that resistance. And they said, we got to really give them something so we can break this spirit of resistance before they get on this boat. Because we don't want to have to deal with that. So they would, you can see, it's only long enough for me to be on my knees, but they would crunch as many of us as they could back in there and keep us in there and make us the last ones they didn't put on the boat. So that was kind of the, the torture that we went through as African people. And I'm being perfectly honest with you, my manhood there, I went in there, I said, I told myself before I went in there, because as a man, I had never cried as a grown man. Right. I said, I'm not going to cry when I go in here. Yeah. And to be perfectly honest, I went through the entire tour. Mm. Brother and sister were crying. I was going around feeling strong. Hey, yeah. how you doing, brother and sister? You know, I said, yeah, you know, this, is my, this is my role here. Yeah. And then something happened to me that for many people wouldn't be quite as sad as what we're seeing here, what they did to our ancestors. But something happened to me that for me, it crushed me to, it took me back to being a child. Mm. And I'll show you what happened to me. I walked in the room where the guide was. Now, this is one of the most sacred places in the world. This is where the beginning of the worst atrocity in the history of the world began. That's right. And this is our suffering as black people. When I walked into the room, and a guide had this picture in the middle of the room. Mm -hmm. And it's a picture of a black hand, a jet black hand, yes, sir. holding a white hand. Mm -hmm. And I saw my race flash before my eyes. I said, anytime we can be in the most sacred of places on the planet, mm -hmm. the places, the very place where the European brought the most suffering to black people, mm -hmm. and the best we can do is desecrate it by having the European hand holding a black hand saying something, through it all, we must come together and learn to love and get along. Yeah. I said, a race like that will never survive. Right. If their enemies ever achieve power, they will certainly die. Right. And so I saw that, and... Out of everything else I saw, I began to get so emotional, I had to run into the other room. And of course, you know, the tour guys saw me going in there, so they were following me in there. And I'm trying to cry in the secrecy of my own little room, you know. Get myself together, you know, so I can come back out strong. But they wanted to come grab me off the ground. So now I got to get myself back together. And I said, you know, I said, if we ever forget, Chancellor Williams told us in the destruction of black civilization, he said that we never, if it's one thing we can never forget, is that the white race has proven themselves to be our bitter enemy. That's right. mm -hmm. And that's not something about hatred, no, no. that's just reality. That's, right. that's just us understanding that we don't have a friend in these individuals, yeah. and the moment we think we are, we might find ourselves right back where this whole thing started. Yeah. Talk about or even in the worst place, a place we call genocide. Yeah, right. Right. And so I told myself, I promised myself, if I ever go back, I'm going to take that down. I don't know what I'm going to have to do if I'm going to yeah. talk to somebody. Right. 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 I said, I should have I jacked the joint then, but I was too weak then. But I said, if I ever go back, we're going to do some talking, because that thing's not going to leave with me leaving it, too. Yeah. Right. 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 It's not going to happen twice. All right. But let's move on into this thing. Now, I want to first, before we go any further, we're talking about the feminization of the black male. I want to, these are not definitions of terms. It's just, I'm going to be using these terms during the course of the lecture. And since I'm going to be using these terms, I want you to know what I'm talking about. It's not the definition of the term, but it's just a quick reference to what I'm talking about. When I say the word sex, I'm talking about the process by which a black man and a black woman interact to produce a child. That's what I'm talking about. When I use the term white sex or perversion, I'm talking about any sexual deviance and or sexual aggression deriving from Europeans that occurs between other than a consenting man and a consenting woman. That includes man. rape, homosexuality, child molestation, bestiality, orgies, anything outside of a black man and black woman together. The reason we do that is because we found that one of the strategies that whites use is they give all these labels to the stuff they do and it legitimizes the behavior. Right. When in fact, the easiest way to understand it is as black people, sex between a man and a woman, between Europeans, it can take on any type of form. So we call all of that stuff that's not black, we just call it white sex, who we get it from? We got it from people, we got it from the whites. White. <laughs> all right, this last term, misogyny, this refers to hatred for women. It's a European or white expression of aggression and hatred towards females, including rape, assault, murder, and very 